Okay, sorry about the delay. A uh, couple, some technical issues with uh, recording in Zoom. So I am going to record this at the same time uh, with Camtasia, just in case, because every once in a while I get a problem with uh, Zoom. It doesn't completely record the entire presentation. Then I got to go back in and recreate it, and it just it's a whole another process. Which okay, yeah, just give me just a moment. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this particular trade. So this was a trade executed as a result of a coaching student asking questions about um, the primary concern for this particular coaching student was worrying about how long they could hold on to the trades and trusting the process of the point and figure. Uh, actually, let me go ahead and change this because I'm going to add the, uh, just for the playback and the recording so everybody knows where we're at, what we're talking about. So this is a dollar Canadian. Dollar Canadian pair. This resembles uh, the time setting that I have on this particular point and figure chart is approximately uh, like a 30 minute chart. Uh, again, the settings can be configured. They're all inside the members area, um, brand new membership area. So I hope uh, I'm going to make some, a few adjustments as I go along. I'm probably going to be moving some of the modules, uh, not the, the lessons within the modules. So you'll probably notice a few changes, but everything's for the most part going to stay the same. And then I have the rest of the stuff that I didn't get to finish uploading to the previous site. And for those of you who missed it, or for those of you who are relatively new into the program, you know, uh, the, the business, this, the nature of, I guess, just about any online business, there's always going to be technical issues. And then there's always going to be a bunch of people that are trying to hack in and steal material and stuff like that, and especially in the last year since the pandemic. Uh, a lot of people have been getting into the trading business. And then they have maybe a little bit of experience or they're following along with somebody, but they're just too anxious. They don't have a sizable trading account. A lot of people don't get that part of trading. They think that they, they kind of skip over or you know, glaze over the whole idea of what, how much money you should have in your trading account to justify making five, ten, or fifteen thousand dollars. A lot of people think that they can jump in with five hundred to a thousand dollars, and they're going to make five thousand dollars at the end of the month. And that's just, it's not the way it works. People don't spend enough time learning about lot sizing and leverage and all of that before they even jump into a, you know, analyzing and learning technical analysis on a candlestick chart. It's kind of backwards, but I get the excitement because I did it. I jumped right in and I just wanted to learn candle patterns and start executing trades. And then I was going to worry about the lot sizing and the leverage later. So it's not a good idea to do that because then people get stuck in a situation where uh, they're disappointed. They're not making as much money as they thought they were going to make. And you got to be realistic about it. You can't blame anybody other than the fact that you just got to know what it means and how much money, you know, like they, the saying goes, it takes money to make money. And this business is definitely one of those. So um, the, the concerns here, uh, you know, with the uh, program and the, the reason that I had to make this change is that there's always people out there trying to copy and repackage material because they can, in their mind, it's easier to just throw up a website and try to sell some kind of a program for $1,000 or $2,000. And, and those people don't have any experience. They can't back it up with any real support. They can't teach you what it is that they're learning themselves. Very often, they just repeat and copy what they see. I see it all the time. I've been seeing it for years. It's not just the last year. It's just the last year has definitely accelerated and make, made it a lot worse and the whole process problems really um, messy. Anyway, it, it's causing a lot of people. Uh, I, I have a lot of professional uh, friends that, that are traders that have been in the business for a lot longer than I have. And they're actually teaching even John Bollinger runs, in, runs into it, people will create fake accounts with his name. And then they go off and they try to sell uh, what appears to be his services, but those people who buy it never get the service because they're not buying it from John Bollinger. They're buying it from somebody else who created a fake account. And this goes on every day, all day long. Like it's everywhere. It's really, really bad. So we're constantly trying to stay one step ahead of them by using different software programs that will allow us to create membership sites. Anyway, this is my point of view, and this is what I've been working on so that I can kind of lock up some of that material. And then when I kick someone out, they stay out. They can't just come running right back in. And that's Previously, my problem is there was no way for me to really kick anybody out and keep them out. So let's get on with it. This was a coaching student who asked this question, was really concerned. And I know a lot of you have that same concern. Can you trust the point and figure? How long should you hold on to the trade? And I always talk about it's the count. It all comes back down to the count. But remember what we talked about in the previous modules in the very beginning, which is to stop and take a look at the overall big picture, the background. Um, if, if this resembles or mimics, let's say a 30 minute or one hour time frame, then there's only going to be so much data that I can compress and put onto this chart without smashing it together to the point where I can't see anything. I can't trade anything. I can't see the patterns. Same thing goes with a candlestick chart or a bar start, a bar chart. So if you end up 
putting in so much data into, you know, so you can go all the way back to, let's say, a week or two ago, and you're using a small time frame, then you're not going to be able to really see your trade off of that. So you're going to have to go up a time frame. So I always recommend looking at the four hour, look at the daily, look at the weekly, the monthly. I mean, obviously, you don't have to look at the weekly or the monthly all that often, but look at the four hour, look at the daily. You should be doing your homework at the end of the day anyway and looking at those closing prices on the daily charts anyway. And then that'll kind of give you a better sense of what's going on. And then from there, you'll know where you are in relation to the overall uptrend or the downtrend. And sometimes there isn't going to be a trend. You might look at the daily time frame and it might be traveling inside of a uh, you know little range of consolidation for about four or five days. And in a situation like that, well, then you know you probably need a little, to be a little more patient, a little careful with it, and then don't trade every little uh, signal that you that you get because there could be p uh, false uh, trades or false uh, alerts, and you got to know which ones to ignore. So again, keep in mind, take a quick look at the overall larger trend, know where you are, so that it, let's say here, if I look over here to the far right, it looks like we're in a downtrend coming into this area right here where it started to create this area of, let's just go ahead and call this accumulation, right? Accumulation would be a consolidation at the lows. So in this case, if it was in a previous downtrend and I go to the four hour chart and I go to the daily chart and I can see that it was in a downtrend, which in fact it was for the most part, you know, at some point, and, and I used to go through this a lot when I first started trading, I kept thinking, well, at some point it's got to bounce and it's got to go back the other direction. And that isn't necessarily the case. Uh, it, it is overall, uh, if you can wait it out long enough, but how long do you got to wait? How long and when is that going to happen? So then you got to start looking for maybe other c uh, critical levels of support that might end up stopping price on the bigger time frames. Let's say uh, the weekly, the monthly. If you start going out into these bigger time frames, you might find something from about like maybe seven, eight, nine, ten years ago that's a critical level of support. And then it runs right into it here on a 30 minute chart when I'm day trading. And if you're not aware of those levels, then you're not going to have. Uh, you know, 100% confidence in the trade with the additional form of confirmation looking at those critical levels of support and resistance. We're doing the same thing even more day trading. Um, uh, you know, the video that I put out yesterday, again, we're looking for a price to run into that level of resistance and then it tested it again the following day and then it reversed and pulled back. That was a really good low risk reversal. Same thing here. It's very possible that, and I'm not saying that it is, but it's very possible that when you find a critical level of support, even if you're day trading it, like on a five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute chart, it could be that price is at a key level of support on the monthly time frame from like 12 years ago. And there it really starts to react in a strong way and you're going to get a really good trade. Again, if you're not aware of the bigger picture and the bigger time frames because you're just, you know, not really willing to take the time to look and click on your charts switching it to from a 30 minute chart to a daily chart or a monthly chart, you're going to miss that information. So it only takes a second. I mean, really, it only takes like 15 seconds. It's not like we're digging ditches. Nothing wrong with digging ditches if that's what you do for a living. But what I'm saying is the manual labor side of it is what I'm getting at. That's why I always use that as a, you know, uh, something to compare it to. It's, we're not doing anything that's really all that strenuous. It's not that hard to do. Just click and just take that time because ultimately it's your money you know, that's the bottom line. You've got to make a profit and you've got to know that you're taking the right trade and you want to have 100% confidence in it, which is that picture perfect idea, right? That picture perfect uh, trade. So again, we've got this area of accumulation. Now, again, I talk about counting the, uh, the number of columns and you're going to have different locations where you can count these columns to get the overall count, uh, the uh, take profit level. And I, I say this all the time, that uh, when I first started trading, I would get into a trade and you're probably sick of hearing it. But for those of you who are new, when I first got started trading back in 2001, I would get into a trade and I'd be up, let's say 20, 30 pips. And I would think, oh, this is awesome because I was trading five standard lots. So it was quite a bit of money at that time. And I'd be thinking to myself uh, and I'd immediately grab like a pencil and a paper and maybe a calculator. And I start thinking, what if I could get 60 pips before the end of this move before like in the next few hours, I'd be thinking these things. So I was already setting myself up for these unrealistic expectations because I didn't know point and figure back then. I understood and I heard about it, but I wasn't really practicing it. I wasn't using it every day. So I would use maybe like the Fibonacci tool. Well, the Fibonacci tool doesn't always lend itself for that, uh, that price structure where you get that A low, the B high, the C pullback, wherever it happens to be. And if it's, let's say a 618 retracement, then I would start looking for specific extension targets as my take profit level. And it works when the Fibonacci tool fits within certain price structures, but it doesn't always work. And very often, even when it works within specific price structure, let's say the price structure lends or, or is, is optimum for me to be able to use it, the Fibonacci tool, 
again, it's not always going to be as accurate as point and figure is. Point and figure, again, if you understand point and figure and you understand and you go through the exercises of manually uh, drawing out your first point and figure chart by hand with graph paper, as I, as we do in one of the exercise videos, it, it's, it's not mandatory, but it's a good idea so that you understand the mechanics and what's going on behind the creation of each one of these zeros and Xs on these charts. But when you understand that, you understand that this chart, the point and figure, isn't going to give us an entry, and it's not going to give us a target. It's not going to give us a count unless something significant is taking place. There's got to be, and it all comes down to that supply and demand battle, that, that constant back and forth struggle of supply and demand. A lot of people, when they look at a chart, a lot of traders, even after 10, 15 years, if they don't learn this information, if they don't learn this stuff, what they're doing is looking at a chart, and they're, they see the basic pattern, but they don't study and identify what causes the, the chart pattern that they're looking at, whether it's, let's say, um, consolidation, if they're looking for a breakout, they still don't study it. They don't take the time. They don't understand the phases. There's, they, they never go deep enough to really break it down to understand how to measure and to identify what's going on. And by using volume, just by using that one indicator, that one volume indicator, you can clearly get a better idea of these reversals. And I'm going to show you what this actually looked like. It was actually a spring. I'm going to show you what it looked like on a 30 minute chart on my uh, MetaTrader platform. And then we'll, uh, I'll show you the count here. So the entry after this move to the downside, so here's our, our uh, accumulation, right? We're going to be analyzing the phases. You can see it here, phase A, phase B, phase C, there's your spring, and then it starts to move back. Here's our tests. These tests are exactly what we want to see after a spring. When we look for a spring, and not every chart, let me, let me stop here and say that if you're going to be looking for springs and up thrusts, and I say this because we've got that one lesson in the module that, that I think the title is, uh, you can make a pretty good living, or I, my description is you can make a pretty good living. And this is something a friend of mine that uses point and figure, he's a lot much older and been in the business a lot longer than me. He recently passed away, but he used to say you can make a really good living uh, trading uh, springs and up thrusts just by simply looking for them. The problem is, and this is the problem, and, and this is a struggle that I think a lot of us have to go through and then learn to accept and learn to uh, process, which is that if you sit down today or if you sit down tomorrow and you're looking for springs and you're looking for up thrusts, you may not see it. You may, it's not going to happen every single day, every single chart, every single whatever time frame, whatever you're looking at. You're not always going to find them. There's going to be nuances. There's going to be variations. There's going to be different, different things that are going to go on that you need to be aware of. And you have to learn to let go so that if you don't see your picture perfect, always be thinking picture perfect. If it's all not coming together and then you're not too sure, pass on the trade. Paper trade it if you have to, but pass on the trade. I would recommend not even paper trading it. If it's not picture perfect with the amount of information and the experience that you know right up to today, I would re recommend leaving it alone and not even paper trading it. And the reason I say that is I used to do that when I was learning to let go of a trade that didn't line up where I was thinking to myself, nah, it doesn't look right, but I feel like I need to do, do I need to do something. I need to take a trade. Uh, when I thought that almost every single one of those trades failed. And then when I started paper trading it, well, I was keeping track of the trade that I was not too sure about. And then I would look at it and then I would think, well, it worked. So then I would get frustrated because it didn't work and I didn't make it, that it worked and I didn't make money. And then the next time I would see another trade that wasn't picture perfect and I wasn't too sure, I would go ahead and take the trade and I would say, well, last time it worked and it didn't work. You know what I mean? And so don't, don't even do that. Like uh, my recommendation is to continue to just look for picture perfect trades, picture perfect springs, picture perfect uh, up thrusts that reverse and fail. And if you don't see them, move on, move to another chart. There's thousands and thousands of charts you can scan and study today. Um, even if you just picked a bulk of the Forex pairs and you're just looking at the Forex market, there's a whole bunch of opportunities. You can switch it to different time frames. Practice and practice and practice and practice. It's the only way. What we're trying to do here is gauge when the market is starting to make its reversal in a markup in a more accelerated way so that by the time we get in, and it's all about timing, by the time we get into the trade, we can experience, for the most part, for most of the time that we're in the trade, uh, we would be positive in the trade. And we're going to see some pullbacks and we're going to see some retracements, which could mean that you might be slightly negative on the trade, but it's not going to go anywhere near your stop loss if you do it correctly. So again, phases, uh, identifying the phases of consolidation is critical. That's the first thing we do. Uh, we do it on a candlestick chart or a bar a chart, and then we transfer the data over here onto our point and figure chart. But when you look at point and figure enough and you analyze the phases and you're pretty familiar with it, you can see them right here in, the, in this point and figure 
the phases of, of consolidation so that you've got phase A, phase B, phase C, and then phase D as it breaks out. So you can accurately uh, determine all of this even on a point and figure. Again, just start off with the, uh, like we recommend in the uh, modules, start off with a candlestick, start off with a bar chart, whichever one you prefer, do your analysis as far as the phase analysis, and then transfer it all over here to the point and figure. So again, back to my original uh, 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 the uh, the test, I guess, is what we would call it. It was just an experiment for this one particular uh, coaching student that was, again, just a little too hesitant in finding and calculating, even if he was able to, his concern was even if he was able to calculate and identify which columns or which groups of these columns would make up the target that he needs to trade to, he was still hesitant in getting into the trade and then leaving it alone. Um, again, because if this is more or less a day trade, meaning that we expect to get into the trade and out of the trade within the same session, if not the same session, then the same trading day. Well, sometimes it may take until the following day. But what's going to help you create enough confidence that you can let go, walk away from your computer, or even put in your stop and your target, and then check on it every once in a while, or maybe put some price alerts as price is moving up towards the target so that you can at least have an additional source of confirmation that it's working out as expected. I don't recommend when you're new to doing this, staring at the charts because you're going to change your mind a lot. And what I mean by that is when you get an entry, if you see it running into this area of resistance right here, and then it slows down right there, if this area right here takes three or four hours and you're sitting at the count at, at the, at your desk, at the computer, and you're waiting and three or four hours passes because it's possible and it's running into this area of resistance, you might convince yourself one of the things that you know is it happens pretty often, which is that it may run into resistance and that may be as high as it goes and it might reverse. That's how a lot of people trade. They don't know point and figure, so they watch the candle patterns and then they wait and look for key levels of resistance or support. But again, support and resistance, whether it's an up a trend line, downtrend line, or a horizontal support and resistance line, those are eventually made to be broken. At some point, they're likely to be broken. And when they're broken, they can create some kind of a signal, whether it's a breakout to the upside that's accelerated or just a spike, like an up thrust that pokes through and then turns around and comes right back down. And then it's a big, massive reversal. Either way, there are ways, and that's why we count the waves, and that's why we analyze the phases of consolidation so that we can determine whether or not that's even going to happen or if it's going to continue as we expect it to. So again, don't sit, I, I don't recommend once you get into the trade and you find a picture perfect trade, you get in at your precise location, you've identified the spring, you've got phase A, phase B, we stay out of trading in phase B, we wait for phase C, it comes through, and again, not all of the trades that we uh, execute are going to have, a, for example, if you look at the schematics, you've got di two different schematics for accumulation and distribution. One of them is going to show you a spring where it clearly price clearly comes down through support and then prints that reversal, a sharp reversal. And then the other schematic is where price creates a support low and it continues to just bounce inside of that support low. And then the final test in, in phase C doesn't even clear and take out the original uh, selling climax low. You have to be aware of that. So again, if you're going to be looking for springs or uh, up thrusts, make sure that what you actually see is a spring. In fact, it is a spring, not something that just kind of you know, falls right through and then reverses something like that. It could be that that's what's happening, but not necessarily. There, again, you study the spring, study the up thrust. I'm going to show you what it looks like on the, on the candlestick chart here in just a moment, and it'll be really obvious to you in just a second here, and I'll show you how to confirm it. A little uh, extra tools that you can go out of your way to confirm that it's actually a spring and it's a reversal. But again, these tests, as I was talking about earlier, as it, moves, as it starts to move back up and into this area of accumulation, we're going to get some tests, and these tests are good. This is what we want. They're not always going to take this much time. Let's say four, five, six uh, columns. This could be four, five, six hours. This could be 10, 12 hours. It really depends. Remember, we're not going to see a change in the X or zero columns until there's a change in momentum, that whole supply and demand shift, and that uh, volatility that we experience as price starts to move and, and create that breakout. So again, here we have our, our, our uh, spring, we have our test, the test is good, and then it creates this little level of resistance right here. And here we get our entry at 1.2078. So we have a couple of different counts. We can take this area right here, we can take this area here, and then we can even go back further because if this trend is going to continue, it could be a bigger picture or a bigger time frame trade that could produce even bigger profits. 
So again, all we were doing here in this example was just day trading and this trade paid 98 pips. It could be that it went to the target and paid 98 pips in three or four hours. It could be uh, seven or eight hours, which let's say it's one trading session or maybe even two or three trading sessions. And maybe you have to hold on to it until about the same time, 24 hours later. It really depends. It's always going to be a little bit different. Usually the day trades will pay within the same day. It depends on what's going on. There's a lot of little interesting things going on in the markets right now. It's got a lot of people sort of worried. Some people are, you know, uh, trying to trade inside of these really choppy ranges of consolidation. I'm getting fewer trades, but I'm still getting good trades just like this. When they pop up, I just have to wait for them. And I won't take anything that's risky. I won't take anything that doesn't make any sense. So again, here's our spring. Here's our count, which brought us right up to the target of 1.2178. Now you'll notice that this is exactly 100 pips. It wasn't anything. It, it, in other words, the fact that it's 100 pips, I, I don't want anybody who's relatively new to watching and learning all of this uh, and watching my videos to think that this is... 100 pips is always what we're going to get on a trade like this. It could be 78 pips. It could be 180 pips. It could be 250 pips. Could have been uh, our, our target based on the amount of data and the columns that we were able to count. And as I mentioned, we can go all the way back over to where this selling climax low started and created this area of accumulation. Not only that, as price breaks out and starts to make its move through phase D, and then we get another backing up here. Again, this is very positive and very healthy, indicating that it's just another test. Sometimes price will stop right there at the old uh, automatic reaction high. That's why we always leave our automatic reaction high here. We can see that it's running right into that level and then it tests. Sometimes it'll stop right there and sometimes it'll go just a little bit lower and turn around. No big deal. That's what we expect. Uh, this is, uh, it's the structure that it's, in, that, that's important to, uh, identify and confirm. And then it continues its, its move higher. So this area right here could be another area of reaccumulation, which we could get an additional count for a much further target as price continues in this uptrend, if that's in fact what it's doing. Remember, it was in a previous downtrend. So this is all I was going to take on a day trade like this. I'm not going to continue to hold. I've got to honor the targets that this time frame, the way I've constructed this chart, again, this is mimicking approximately a 30 minute chart. Well, that's a day trade for me. Well, sometimes I could get lucky if I was looking at a big time frame, let's say the daily and I got a signal and I got into a trade, but the 30 minute also gave me an entry so I can get in and I would have a count on a 30 minute, but I would also be, if it's a trade that I've identified on the daily time frame, I've got to honor the, the target based on the daily time frame, if you understand what I mean. So that's what I'm getting at. If, if you're trading off of the 30 minute, take profits where you're supposed to based on the data that the 30 minute gives you. It is possible that, yeah, you can switch to the daily time frame a little bit later. If it picks up and it keeps going, you might get lucky in that situation. But what if it stops? Remember, we were in a previous downtrend. It could be that it ran into a critical level of resistance, and this is all it's going to give me. So I don't want to give back all of these profits or, you know, a, two, uh, you know, a third of my profits just to see if it's going to continue higher. I have to respect the targets that I've generated with this point and figure chart based on the time frame that I'm using and the way I've constructed this chart. If I want a bigger time frame trade like a daily, I've got to change the way I've constructed this chart and then I'll get a whole different count. So keep that in mind. Remember, take profits where you're supposed to. So this gave me a target here at 78. I think price went right through that 20, that 1.22. So it went up about, what is that? Uh, maybe 22 pips higher. Now you might also remember that in some of the videos, I'm also talking about trading it to psychological levels. Sometimes if I'm in a trade and I'm hands on, I'm hands on and I see that it's moving through and there's a lot of momentum and it's not really pulling back very far. It just keeps powering through a little bit higher. Then I'm going to trail it a little bit higher and then boom, close out my trade. And I may not necessarily hold for the 1.2200 psychological level. I might get out at like 93, 95, 97. Sometimes they'll stall right there at 97 and then drop and pull back down or 95 or 93. We've had that happen, right? The point is, here's my target at 78. Anything under 78. If I'm going to let it roll all the way back down, then I'm not doing what I'm supposed to. And I'm breaking the rules. I've got to take profits here either at 78 or if I'm going to trail it a little bit further, be careful and be prepared to lock in those profits because the bottom line is I've still made uh, a perfect trade. 
This is a number one. I've gotten into the trade. This is what the coaching student did, by the way, today. And we were reviewing. You've got to trust the process. You've got to know which um, columns and which series of columns to count, including going out a little bit further if you're going to trade this higher. And you have to be able to, to determine, based on the way you've constructed the chart, where your take profit level is and then do it. So you've got to set in your take profit and your uh, stop loss. We know where our stop loss is. That was pretty easy to figure out. And it never went anywhere near and didn't test. Sometimes we see these sharp tests that come back down and then they bounce back up. Uh, that's the way it goes. That You've got to expect that. That's just the way trading is. It doesn't always happen, but you've got to be prepared for it. So know where your stop is and know based on your entry and where your stop is, where your target is, now you can calculate your risk to reward or your reward to risk. So if this is a two for one, reward to risk, then that's some people only want a two for one. Some people only want a three for one. And one of the, one of the most effective ways in my personal opinion, in my opinion, to calculate that is to use point and figure, because you're going to be able to see a clear reading of where your stop is and where your target is. And it's based on the data that we have in a minute here. Again, I'm going to show you that spring and what it looks like. It's going to look really, really obvious when you see the candlestick chart in just a moment. But again, back to the mindset and the mentality of the coaching student who was afraid initially. Well, the first thing I want to say is I get it. Don't be afraid of being afraid, right? It's a new, it's a new, um, it's a new tool. It's a new way of looking at trading and it's a new experience. It, you know, if you've been doing this for six months, then you've got the hang of it. You've got nothing to really fear. You know that it works over and over again. And if you can't follow the rules, then you just got to start working on making yourself follow the rules, right? I, I used to do that. Once I had a trading system in place and I knew that it worked, I was still breaking the rules because I was still a little afraid, right? And it was just based on my previous experiences before I found a system and I made the system that worked for me uh, part of my life. So I still had to get over that mindset, that whole fear of losing and you, it, it, it eventually passes you, just by doing, just by doing the work and focusing on what you're supposed to do and leaving it alone over time, it passes. And the amount of time that it takes, I can't tell you if it's going to take two weeks, two months, or two years. It depends on how much and how involved you get in the process. The other issue is that you could be sitting down to trade today and you could be having a bad day or maybe an argument with somebody or something happened. You know, you've got a big family, you've got a bunch of changes with your kids and things like that. Uh, all of that can have some kind of an impact. And when I go through things like that, I just stop. Like I don't, I don't want to trade. Um, I'm not, I know I'm not going to be a hundred percent. And when I'm not a hundred percent, well, I'm usually going to trade. Okay. But I don't really want to make any mistakes because then, you know, I just start to like beat myself up over it. I don't do that anymore, but I did when I first started trading and don't go through that. Just try to stay away from it. Realize that your fear is that, yeah, you're learning something new. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but keep going, lean into it, appreciate and uh, accept and just roll in all of that fear. Just, you know, wrap yourself up in it. And, and that's what I had to do. I had to just like really sit there with a smile and say, this is exciting. I started changing some of the, the words that I was using in my mind. And, and when I was speaking out loud and talking to myself, I started saying, instead of being afraid, well, this is exciting. I'm really excited to see how this is going to turn out. This is new for me. I would talk to myself in a different way. It was really important. And I kept repeating that. So uh, I know we're talking about a little bit of a uh, uh, you know, psychology here, but it, it's critical. It's important to be able to get that down. And that's what helps you sort of let go. You have to understand that at the same time for the coaching student today, it was kind of a test. Could this really work? And if it really works, think about that. Like think about how much money this is. 98 pips on a standard lot is 900, approximately $900. So that's not a bad trade on one standard lot. Um, you know, like I said, when I first started trading, I was trading five standard lots. I know that some of the coaching students are actually trading more than five standard lots when they execute a trade like this because they really believe in the system and they're making a lot of money on just one single trade. This is one trade on the dollar Canadian based off of the 30 minute time frame. Like that's a day trade. We've got other trades where we're looking at the weekly and the monthly, and we're holding on to these trades for like 4,000, 5,000 pips. It's possible. You can do it. They don't set up all the time. You just have to wait for it. Be patient. So again, a few things to take away from this. And one, one of the things that I was talking about with the coaching student that was going through this issue, what, which was, you know, uh, what if I, yeah, I'm not too comfortable with holding on? What if it doesn't hit that target? What if for some reason it doesn't hit the target? First of all, remember, it's possible that it may not hit the target. It's possible that we just miscalculated all this. It is very possible. So that's why we have to do all of that work counting the waves and going to that bar chart or candlestick chart just to make sure. And then taking a look at the four hour, the daily and the weekly if we have to, just to get a look at that bigger background 
uh, time frame, that bigger pit, that big picture. Are we in a serious downtrend or uptrend? Have we si have we hit, and is it sitting on a critical level of support on the larger time frames? That could also have an impact. Like I said earlier, it's very possible. And we would, if we didn't look at the daily or the weekly or the monthly, we might not even see that here on the 30 minute chart. If this is a critical monthly low from like 12 years ago, you might miss it. So take a few minutes just to click over and look at the different time frames just to to. Uh, Make sure that you're doing the right thing. You're trading in the right direction for the most part. And then, uh, again, learn to just leave it alone and let it go. Uh, again, I don't recommend sitting in front of the charts. It's interesting. If you've got nothing else to do, go ahead. But I would personally just recommend setting in maybe price alerts as it's hitting maybe some of the first targets and then just leaving it alone. Uh, it, again, this works every single time if you do it correctly. So the key is just getting the practice, putting in the time to get the practice so that you know which... Uh, columns to count and then to project your target and making sure that you got the phase analysis part down correctly. Uh, some people won't trade off of a spring like this inside of phase C. That would be a little more advanced. Some people would rather wait for it to break out of the consolidation phase and then pull back and sit here in this range because now they know it's broken out and it's on its way. It's likely on its way. And there's nothing wrong with that. That would be a more conservative trade. And then you would get another entry here and you would use the count with the information that you have here. Certainly being aware of the data that's down here, take your first count with the information, the initial setup, the initial setup, even if you get in here, up here where I'm moving my cursor after the breakout in phase D, you still want to have the initial count with the initial setup, which would tell you where it's likely to stop. And then you can gather the information from the point in time that you get into your entry, whichever, whether, whether it's a double, triple top entry, something like that. And you can count the number of columns, which would be a smaller count than what you get here based on the data. And you uh, could certainly trade it. Usually they'll stack up or line up right around that same range. Sometimes I'll do that if I miss a trade and then I get a second entry after the breakout in phase D, I wait for the entry and then I use the data that's here available and it'll give me, uh, you know, sometimes it'll line up just a little bit further than let's say this 1.21. I'm just giving you an example uh, based on this entry down here. And then that entry here in phase D uh, and the count may give me the target that would stop right there at the 1.2200. It, it's a possibility. It happens every once in a while. So be careful. Be very conservative. You don't want to be gathering all this data and thinking it's got to go further. You have to know based on the initial setup down here where the first target is or where the actual target is and then start to add more to that trade if the trend continues to uh, break out and move higher if you're going to hold or scale out of the trade. That's the other thing that I would recommend. If you want to maximize a trade and we're expecting and suspecting that this is likely to continue and create another extension higher, then I would scale out of the trade. I, whatever the case is, based on the initial entry, when I get in, I'm going to lock in profits. I'm either going to close out the trade where I'm supposed to at that target, or I'm going to take off, let's say, scale out and, and close out maybe half of my position at the first target and then set the remaining half at a break-even stop. And I've got a long ways to go if it for whatever reason, stops right around here and bounces and goes back up again. That's a possibility. That's something that you can certainly do. Uh, if you can't scale out and close half of your position, I recommend putting on two lots. So if you use normally one standard lot and you're going to be putting on two open positions at the initial entry, then just cut that standard lot in half. Put on you know, 0 0.5 twice, close the first one at the first target, and then set the second 0 0.5 trade at a break-even stop and then see if you can't get more to the upside and then pay attention to the closing prices, right? If it, you know, if we get to the end of the day and then all of a sudden we see that there's some kind of signal on the daily time frame, and we're expecting it to go higher, then you're probably still in the trade. And then you would look at the larger time frames. At that point, you'd be looking at the daily or the weekly. That's one of the ways that you can transition from a trade that you initially get into on a smaller time frame and then keep it going if it's going to continue to go. Every once in a while, you get those opportunities. But there's nothing wrong with just getting into the trade and taking 98 pips, and then you're done with the trade and look for another opportunity. I'm trying to switch over to the uh, MT4 platform, and whenever I use Zoom, i got to make sure that I'm selecting a different view. So here we go. This is, this is the MT4 platform. So this is the MT4 platform for the dollar Canadian, and this is the 30-minute time frame. So you can see it's very, very much the same uh, that we saw here on the uh, point and figure, the basic overall uh, movement. But what I'm going to do here is switch to a one hour chart. And this is something that I do regularly. I, I, I highly recommend always toggle through these different time frames just so that you can get a better perspective of, of what's going on here. 
but I want to show you this reversal and how easy it was to spot. Sometimes it may be a little bit choppy and a little more difficult to, to spot this spring on a smaller time frame. Let's say for whatever reason I picked the 30 minute. Well, it could be that it's a little bit choppy and hard to see. Uh, let's say if I go to a 15 minute chart and it still may be a little bit choppy and difficult to see. So let me go back to the 30 minute chart, which was my original setting here. And then I'm going to go to the one hour chart. Notice here on the one hour chart how easy it is to see now. Now I'm going to open this up and you can see a full on reversal candlestick pattern. We all like trading these candlestick patterns when they're picture perfect and they occur at these very, very specific locations. And I'll, I'll end here by telling you again, you've probably heard me say this many times with my story about when I first started trading, I bought every book that I could possibly buy on candlestick patterns. I'd go to Barnes and Noble and then I'd go to the library. Library was pretty limited. It was mostly just old school technical analysis stuff, but I was buying every book that I could possibly buy. And then uh, 2001, 2002, I think I bought Martin Pring's uh, technical analysis book, uh, or sorry, CD-ROM. And it was uh, candlestick patterns and things like that. Bought uh, Steve Nissen, uh, all of them. And so I just started like firing off trades everywhere. I would see a, a bullish engulfing candle and I would think, okay, on this candle right where I'm moving my cursor, it's, it's going to break out. It's going to start. I, I better get into this trade right now. And I didn't understand how to analyze the phases of consolidation and my expectations were completely out of whack. They weren't realistic. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't understand price structure. A lot of people talk about price structure, but they really, for the most part, don't know what the hell they're talking about. And, and they don't have the patience to sit here and wait. So I was one of them. I would sit there in the beginning of my trading career and I would look at this and I would think, okay, bullish engulfing candle, got to buy. And then it would buy and it would do this. It would just bounce around for like, and then all of a sudden 18, 19, 20 hours. And I'm exhausted. I'm falling asleep at the screen. Didn't want to walk away because I didn't know where it was going to go, right? Uh, obviously, my stop's going to be just a few pips below that low right there. I don't know where to take profits. I don't know how far it's going to go. I wasn't using point and figure, so I couldn't calculate where I should take profits. And then all of a sudden, I see a candle like this slamming right back down. I'm thinking, if I was awake and I was watching this, I'd probably just panic and close the trade out and I'd lose. Or if I was holding on to it and it would spike up one more time, and let's think maybe I fell asleep during this time because so much time has passed. We've, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about if you've been there. And then all of a sudden it slams right back down again one more time. And now I'm really negative at this point, even if I put price alerts. So it's going to turn out to either be a scalping trade where I'm earning just a little bit of profits or I'm going to get stopped out or I'm going to clearly get stopped out and I'm really going to panic and I'm going to lose a lot of money. And I had no idea what to do. So here is a picture perfect candlestick pattern, but you'll notice that this is as the spring develops. Now we have new concepts, right? We know how to analyze the phases of consolidation. We know how to analyze phase A, phase B, phase C, look for our spring. Then if you want to look at the candlestick patterns, then you look at your candlestick patterns and you're usually going to see it right there. You may have to go through between different time frames. You might have to look at the 50, if you're looking at a five minute, you might have to look at a 15 or a 30 or a one hour until it becomes very clear. I just showed you two differences between the 30 minute and the 15 minute chart. It was a bit choppy in there. All of a sudden I go to the one hour chart time frame and it's right there. And you've got to take a second just to click through it and you'll see it. This is a picture perfect. Like there would be no hesitation. If I was going to trade off of candlesticks alone, this would be my trade. In addition to the fact that I would be counting the waves and measuring the volume to identify this super sharp reversal right here. And then I have ultimate confirmation. I've got volume as my indicator. I'm analyzing the phases of consolidation. I see a clear spring in phase C and now, if I wanted to use the candlestick chart, I could. So again, I avoided candlestick patterns and trading them inside of these ranges right here, which would have just been a mess and is super exhausting. Or I just look for that one picture perfect opportunity, which is again, either looking for the spring or the upthrust or waiting for a price to break out and then trade in phase D, if, if that's what you're more comfortable with. So really, really interesting. Let me go back to the uh, point and figure so that we end here and I'll look for some questions here in just a moment. So here's the point figure again. There's the, there's the spring, there's the testing. You'll notice that there's a little more testing that we see here on this chart again, because this is mimicking something that's about a 30 minute chart. And then I get that accelerated move to the upside, which is the completion of that bullish engulfing candle. And it just keeps moving and powers right up into that 100 pip or almost 100 pip. We'll call it 98 pip profit trade. And that's how it's done. Again, this may not set up on this pair tomorrow. It may not do this. Uh, it may be two or three days before I get a trade that's this clean on this pair. Uh, it's been choppy on this pair uh, quite often over the last few weeks, and I'm really, really careful about, uh, very selective about when I trade it. Again, selective and what's careful means something like this. When I analyze a phase of consolidation, I'm looking for the spring, something that's really obvious. I don't want to 
if, if it's a little more suspect, I would rather not trade that schematic where we see accumulation and it, the testing in phase C just stops at the support. I like seeing when price clearly reverses or I'm sorry, goes through support and then clearly reverses to the opposite side because I can use that wave counting method and the fact that I'm looking at the spring and the testing and the backing up. And then I see all of that momentum and it really is a much better opportunity for me to trade. I prefer to trade springs with that schematic where you clearly see it breaking through support and then reversing and going back up where it's dramatic as opposed to the schematic where we have testing in phase C and it doesn't go any lower and then it breaks out. In that situation, a lot of times it, with that particular schematic where it's not creating a spring, I'm going to wait until it backs up out in phase D, backs up into that automatic reaction high, and then I'm going to trade the breakout appropriately. I'll still take whatever count is available based on the information and the data that I have. Uh, but again, that's where I would prefer to trade the one that doesn't create the spring. So again, you can make a really good living trading springs and up thrusts that fail and reverse, but you have to make sure that you're trading a true up thrust or spring and it looks perfect to you. And again, if you're new, well, you may not have any point of reference for the perfect. Just look at the videos, watch the schematics, watch the charts and the, uh, uh, you know, it, the live coaching examples and all of that, the, the uh, study charts and the study chart videos, because we break this down all the time. Just keep watching those videos, keep watching them, and then go out to your charts and look for them. This same pattern right here could have very well have been the daily time frame or the weekly time frame or the monthly time frame, And it would have been a really great trade opportunity. Of course, we'd be into a trade quite a long time if it was monthly, but you get the point. It's still the same basic pattern. It's still the same basic structure. It doesn't matter if this is Forex. This is the same thing I do when I'm trading gold, oil, silver, futures, stocks. It doesn't matter. It's the same basic thing. And don't force it. If you don't see what you're looking for and you're looking for a spring, move on to the next chart. Do not try and force a trade where it doesn't belong. That's when you're going to lose money. Let me check these messages here. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so you, uh, I didn't know if you were here. Um, let me take a look here one more time before I move on. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, the video, I'm going to post this in the new membership area. Uh, I will send this out through email. All right, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you uh, for attending, and I'll see you next Thursday.